I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson Antique Furniture Restoration in Gorm, Maine. This is a nice uh, late 19th century Victorian gentleman's parlor chair. And uh, anybody that's done a lot of repair work or if you're in the business of doing furniture repair, you've seen these kind of things. This has happened a lot and it always seems to be after the chair's been nicely upholstered. Upholsters have a bad habit of not always really repairing things as well as they should be before they upholster them. I've got to figure out exactly how I'm going to fix it. And of course the real problem isn't the arm. This is the problem. The first thing I'm going to do is carefully tape off all this upholstery and that will be helpful at the end of the job when I need to uh, polish this up. Okay, that wasn't bad. It took about an hour and 15 minutes, but it's nice now that I don't have to worry about the upholstery. And it gave me plenty of time to look closer at this back joint and think about how I'm going to do this. But first thing I'm going to do is drill out all these broken dowels. No, nope, no such luck. I'm going to flush that off and then drill down the middle of it with a smaller bit. I may end up enlarging this dowel size uh, it, it'll get rid of a lot of the sloppiness around there. I'm going to put some dowels in here without glue, and these dowels are a little short, but uh, uh, I, I want to just try it out. Boy, that went together really well. Okay, but before I even think about gluing this up, I've got to see what I can do about this back joint. There's some kind of a filler or wedge in this joint that you can see there. I'm going to pull back the cambric and see if I can see anything from the inside. Yeah, just as I suspected, this doesn't really give me access to anything of that joint, but I wanted to at least look. I'm going to clamp this up dry without glue. I want to see if that will then pull this back forward where we want it to be and then I can determine the size of the space in here where I'm going to put a wedge in. I've got this clamped up and I'll show you how I did that. Uh, and I think it seems to have pulled this together, pulled this forward. I think that this uh, space here is now opened up to its maximum.
Okay, this uh, looks like it might work okay. I've got two dowels in there, two dowels that are the joints for here, and I've got to cut the wedge to go around them. This just might be crazy enough to work. First, I'm going to glue the dowels to the arm. I'm using a hide glue, specifically uh, old brown glue. It comes uh, pre-mixed, but you do have to heat it up. Now I'll put this back on, uh, still without glue, you know, here, because I need to determine the length of that back dowel. Oh, looks like I can make it with that. That's excellent. I'm using a weight here to hold this in position. I don't want the top of the chair resting against the bench because it'll push back against this joint where I want to wedge it. Okay, we'll let this dry overnight. Okay, let's uh, let's see what we got here. It's like a rock. I get no movement in this back at all. I feel pretty good about this. I'm not relying on glue. Uh, this wedge is doing most of the work to keep this from flexing. Not to take anything away from these glue joints. The dowels were tight. The hide glue is extremely strong. I'm going to fill the area around my uh, wedge with some wood putty. This is uh, Elmer's wood filler. 
and it's a water-based product. It, it's easy to work with, and I've added dry pigment to it, extra dark walnut. I'm using the Blendall powder stain because that's what I have. I think any uh, powdered dry pigment would work fine with the uh, Elmer's. And you can dip your finger in water and kind of smooth this out. The idea here is I want to, I don't want to have to like do some kind of heavy sanding in this area. Now I'll let that dry a little bit more, you know, for like five or 10 minutes and I'll wipe it off again. Five or six minutes have gone by and I'll just touch this rag in this water and wipe off some of that excess. This bit, this should come off with a gray pad. All right, I've let this dry overnight. Now I'm going to seal this area with uh, some aerosol shellac. No, uh, no touch up on the arm repair. That's nice. I'm going to wax this whole frame up now. I'm going to use Brie Wax. I have this dark brown Brie Wax. And I'm going to apply it with 4 aught steel wool. Smooth it out, help clean it. I've no doubt this is the original finish. Doesn't look like it's ever been refinished. And I'm uh, thinking this wax ought to revive it just fine. You know, uh, the waxing was going well, but uh, last night I was looking at this and the wax had soaked in too much on these, there was a, these particularly raw areas. And so I wiped the whole chair down with the uh, Mohawk watch wax remover, and then I uh, gave it a coat of shellac and I just uh, sprayed on the coat with the aerosol. And so now this morning I'll just re-wax it, but it won't be as much uh, work as before. It'll wax up quite easily. So I'm going to uh, 
I'm going to wax it again. I'm going to use the uh, the Brie wax and steel wool, four aught steel wool, and it's going to go really quickly. I really I'm using steel wool. I really want to just you know, smooth this out, cut back the sheen a little bit, and uh, you know it'll, it feels pretty smooth, but it'll feel really silky smooth if I go over it with steel wool. Wow, so there you have it. A beautiful Rococo Revival a gentleman's parlor chair from the second half of the 19th century. And uh, this chair was basically unusable. The arm had broken off. Uh, the back was loose. So I was, luckily I was able to re-glue this, this arm properly with dowels because, because of the looseness of this back. And I was able to secure this back with a wedge in the back joint there. And what's important to know is that in order to repair this chair properly, it really needed to be all the upholstery, springs, everything completely stripped out, taken apart and re-glued. That wasn't going to happen. But what I've done here, number one, I was able to repair this correctly. I just put a little wedge in here. I used hide glue. So when the time comes in the future that this chair does get re-glued, my repairs won't stand in the way at all of that procedure. I think it looks pretty good. I have about six hours in this job. I use the bandsaw, the stationary belt sander, and these hand tools and materials. If you're interested in the tools and materials I use, you'll see a button sometimes on the screen that says show products. And also in the description, at the end it says show more, click on that. And please, if you like my videos, you know, comment, like, subscribe, and feel free to share this video on other platforms. I'd really appreciate it.